looking to um, wrap up with our goals for this year, and then at the end, if time permits, we have a recap for last year's goals and, and where the progress is for that. Um, so at this point, I'll go ahead and jump, jump over to Tom. All right. What, what we have here is really the product of your last session. You spent an hour uh, putting up um, a, a bunch of different ideas. Uh, I think with the exception of uh, correcting my own spelling mistakes, I don't think I've altered them at all. <laughs> uh, we've also distributed a paper copy of just the same things in front of you. And I think tonight's session is really all about uh, talking further about these, perhaps refining them, and, and perhaps uh, winnowing them down to a, a, a smaller number. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. Uh, I've just found in past experience, I think it's, it's better to have a shorter list, more manageable list, so you can actually uh, make some progress. Um, oftentimes with too many or broad goals, it's very hard to stay focused and actually see tangible results. So I've proposed a process I've used in the past of you know, everyone having a different color marker and all of you being able to come up here uh, and uh, assign votes. And there's any number of ways to do it. Um, what we've done in the past is, is giving you all 10 votes, and you can just use hash marks if you'd like. Uh, and it's your way of uh, distributing votes uh, <coughs> in order of your preference in terms of uh, really what you think is important. And then at the end of that process, we can look and tally them up and see what uh, make better sense of where you all see the values. Can I vote more than one? You for can one vote ten times. I can put ten under one. I, I, I think want to. it's really up to you, but I think, yeah, I think if, if someone feels so strongly about a goal, you can you can assign all ten mm -hmm. of your goals. And we have uh, in years uh, past uh, to that goal. Yes. Should we have a brief discussion before we go into this as to the impact of the governor's budget on what we laid out here? Perhaps we should be. As to you want to change the goal? Maybe change, make make some changes in there. I, I don't know. Yeah, it certainly has that, uh, potential implications on these two. It just it strikes me, right? Um, obviously, whatever comes our way externally is going to affect the budget process. And I think a number of the strategies laid out here uh, kind of hinted that. Also, this maintaining and strengthening legislative relationships is likely to be a pretty important one. Um, the one thing that I'm mildly concerned about, and I think back two years ago, many of you were here then, the last biennium uh, for the state's budget, they didn't get their work done until late June. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the date was, but it was 29th mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And we, along with most other communities, actually adopted a final budget only to be having to go back and revisit right. it and have to go back to the voters the third time to kind of correct the impact that was pushed upon us. Uh, My guess might, is that will might, happen again because the statutory uh, adjournment for the first part of the session is June. Yeah, I mean, there'll be a lot of budget wrangling in the uh. state uh, all the way through the spring. The real work gets done in those last seven to ten days in June, frankly. Yep. Uh, but be that as it may, that's a, I'll say, a bit of a constraint, but it's beyond our control. Uh, we got to be mindful of it. So, what do you, what do you think about Ed's suggestion in light of hmm. that? Uh, is there any? Uh, further recognition or modification of any of the existing goals or a new goal, for instance, uh, around that issue? Well, I would, I would think that uh, identification of revenue sources has got to be one of the key things that well, both the Finance Committee and the, and the Council has got to be concerned about. Um, uh, and I know that we I have I know a that question. Yes. What is funny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm serious. I, I think it's a, a serious question, but at the same time, what has changed? Nothing has changed in the last 10 years, let alone the next 10 years, on what the finance sources of our municipal uh, government is. Um, the impact of what, how much money is given to us by the state is the only variable that's really in the equation because we kind of know from period to period what our tax base is going to be on a relative basis. Uh, I mean, it does increase, decrease based on economic cycles. Um, I don't disagree that the governor's budget can impact us in multiple areas. I think that personally it impacts us in determining what priority it is in that whole process. Um, I mean, the budget itself or the result of the budget, end game of the budget? Either way. I mean, right now, because of how broad that budget perspective is, I mean, think about it. What he's recommending right now is astronomical. It's never been heard of. 
um, whether or not it filters down in, into the same amount. Um, you know that you know darn well it's going to be something smaller. You just don't know what's going to filter down through, right? Right. Yeah. The other um, dynamic is the two-year budget cycle. Right. Many of the governor's proposals, at least those that have financial impact on us. Uh, I believe will actually be kicking in in year two. So yeah, exactly. But it, it's still important to be thinking about that, um, and, and actually you'll have some certainty going into next year's budget uh, around those pieces. Uh, but it is a dynamic, very fluid situation. It's huge. And I've done some initial analysis, have a sense of uh, <coughs> you know what the current impact might be, uh, but and we need to monitor that. that I just want to mention, um, personally I think that um, and I say this to it as much a respect as possible, is that the governor's budget has little impact on our decision making because it is so volatile. You never know what's going to happen. You can't. W you have to wait until it's done. We can't predict what's going to happen. We can sit there and say today that um, X, Y, and Z is going to be at whatever it might be, and then what happens at the legislative level is just going to happen. I mean, we have little impact in that um, while we have some influence with the le legislators, but they're still, uh, it's much larger. Um, I think there is significantly more impactful areas um, when you look outside of the state planning part. I, state planning, I, it's, I, it's I, so I, would, I would say that we all realized that there probably was going to be some fiscal restraint exercised by the governor as soon as he was elected. Right. And he ran on it. So I think we've all along been assuming that fiscal rest restraint was right. going to be an important watchword for ourselves. So in that respect, you're right. You can't predict it, but you know that it isn't going to be largesse coming from the state. Therefore, I think we should assume certain conservative assumptions in, in other words, I wouldn't undertake a large uh, expenditure. Right. I'd, I'd put it off until another year, it, even though it might be something that we think is important, but if it could wait, and I'm not trying to pick on one, but town-wide revel was turned down, I think, in large part because it was a large expense. And people said, well, we don't think we really need it at this moment. So. I think that would be the way I'd look at the uh, uh, all the items. Is just be yeah. relatively conservative in my my judgment on. It, it strikes me at this point in time, late January. Uh, this certainly speaks to that issue, kind of recognizing that's yeah. going to be fluid. That's going to change. Mm -hmm. and we need to continually recognize that as it evolves, and then really maintaining those relationships. I mean, that's our that's our access point into the budget process. Right. It's a legislative process at this point. And uh, to that uh, end, we are, uh, I think, going to set up uh, uh, a meeting with the delegation in uh, mid-February. So they'll... Um, yeah, the second meeting in February. The 18th, 18th of the uh, yeah. Letters went out today. So, to, to move, move that along a little bit, um, for, certainly for myself, you know, I understand, you know, we, we don't have the crystal ball. We don't know. But some of the guiding principles, which is what the goals are, is no matter what happens at the state, we're going to still try to maximize our, our values. We're still going to try to avoid layoffs if that's possible. Um, you know, we're still going to look at what's level services, what's new initiatives, and balance that against our revenue streams. Um, certainly, it's you know, you, you have you know, finance committee has been extremely active out of the gates this year. I expect they'll be continuing that momentum and in that scheme, and and will keep us all involved. Um, so out, outside of budget, um, it, it, was there something that perhaps was maybe missed in a goal that, that you? No, no. Oh, okay. I, I merely brought it up. No, that, I hey, think, absolutely. <laughs> I, I yep. think we should just discuss it a little bit yep. and see how we feel about it. I mean, I kind of agree with everybody. Yep. With a whole bunch of different aspects. Maybe in the spirit of something miss and kind of in the context of what we just talked about, does there need to be anything up there about the school trying to work collaboratively with the school budget process? I know that's, that's a real strong goal. The finance committee, I just mm -hmm. don't see anything about yeah. sort of that. So I don't know if that's something that we want to, but that, that really kind of factors into the I think that's budget. improved communication, personally. I was say the same but, thing. But yeah. 
But it could be a subset of that. Yeah, I mean, it's not just civic here. engagement. It could be. It's part. It's, I have it worked into my stuff that I've been working on, but. Um, I mean, just to me, civic engagement to me, the way I read it was sort of facing our constituency. And I guess that just brings the I question. Was, I was kind of, yeah, it definitely has to do with our constituents, but I was sort of looking at it like every, everybody that we come in contact with, sort of mm -hmm. opening that up. And would, it, would anyone be opposed to adding that as a further kind no, of goal, just to heighten you know, the collaboration? Um, I think it should be under improving communication. Yeah. And the reason is that um, within that uh, confine or structure, you have to recognize the roles and responsibilities. And the, and the fact is that the school board has their own role mm -hmm. and their own responsibility, and we cannot impede on that. Yeah. And uh, that includes their budgetary oversight right. um, that's mandated by state law. And they're getting nailed, too. Yeah. And they're getting nailed, too. I mean, they're, they're not facing, uh, facing any... Uh, well, and it's, it's odd because uh, we're the only group who sets the school budget number that goes to referendum. You mean by that? The town council. council. Seven. That's the state requires it. Well, yeah. that's what I mean. What, what, yeah. what Sean was pointing out, how it really was a communication issue. Right. Because they have their own responsibilities. But oddly, we have the, the ultimate state. responsibility right. of know. setting the number. I know. Uh, it's an it's a odd system. Yeah. Well, I think, too, um, you know, certainly th th these are, you know, the bullets that are under the subcategories were... I mean, to me, it's it's a general improved communication, and we also just have an additional. I mean, it's not just those two bullets under it. It's right. it's an improved communication all over. Um, was there anything else before we get too too far here um, that somebody wanted to add, or do we want to go ahead and start working on? Let's see. No? I mean, there's 17 in total. Um, and some of them, in my opinion, are, are overly broad. Either they should yes. be eliminated or further refined, just so we know yes. what the goal is. Do you want to just walk I think we should them? go. Uh, personally, I think we should go through the checkmark process. Yes. Okay. And I think the evaluation process will actually eliminate yeah. yep, sir, sure things that are not of interest. Okay. Are we voting on each one of the individual, individual things no, underneath? Just the category. Or just the category? Yeah, okay. no, I apologize. It's the bold yeah. is Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So All right. right. And we each have ten votes. Ten votes. Right. Yeah, there go put oh. ten little dashes oh. up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, why don't we start with... Or you want to have... All at it? Sure. Yeah. I would just have that. Nice That's why you nice. gave us a marker, right? I'm waiting. Yeah. We're not going to mark them. We're just not writing on you. Okay. <laughs> 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 I know. I'm going to step out of the way. So uh, it's you're going to get trampled. No, yeah. I want to push you, 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 want, you, want, you want to make sure. I want to swing. Where? Where do you like? Well, you're not going to swing any votes by voting last. Oh, I may. I may put all ten in one thing, you know. Michael.
I gave my hundred dollars to pop back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god.
No, it is. It's an ad hoc committee. That seems like acceptable. That seems like yeah, a, a comfortable number that's not too big. Right. I think it's I think 11 is good. Thank you kindly. And I think if you look at the 11, it's, there's contributions from every single one of us in that 11. That's a good point. The 11 pretty much encompasses all of us, so. Yeah, I mean, um, from so a question, right. don't we already have an all committee summit? summit? We have that? We one? had one. We had one. We had one that said go. Said go sponsored it. Yeah. Um, was that mostly the Rotary Chamber and SEDCO, or was it also no. the other? All committee. It was all committees. committees. Okay. Yeah, town committees. And it yeah. went so well. You want to? I think it's a great idea. Government yeah. with improved communication. It sounds like yeah. it's a element of. Okay. Yeah, and that's a that's certainly an acceptable thing now is to try to merge. Um, so Bill's suggestion is. Uh, Promote open government and transparency with the, with are the part of the improved communications strategy. So all of a sudden we're at 10 if we kind of merge those two. Yep. Yep. Any further opportunity for collaboration or merging? Uh, in some ways, survey as services and maintain essential services are kind of the same Thanks. subject. So kind of define and maintain essential. Peter, remind us what survey of, mm -hmm. did you bring that one up, survey of Well, I think, I, think the I, question, I think the question became, when we said maintain essential services, then the question became, well, you asked what mm -hmm. are essential services, and everybody's going to define it differently. Okay. You know, it really was trying that to was find a way. Point. Yeah, I actually brought that up because uh, I'm interested in the new movement um, that's around, I think it's called Age in Place, and it's about communities that allow seniors to really oh, yeah. age in their place and what services the communities uh, provide. And it's not just about taxes, and um, but it's services so that they can actually stay in their home um, outside of just taxes. It's including um, food and energy and uh, whatever it might be. So me, all of that falls under civic engagement. Yeah, transportation. Yeah, it's really getting a sense right. of uh, what we do good and, yep. what, and what we can improve on. Yep. So I think that gets you to ten, which is a mm -hmm. seems like a real yeah. round and comfortable number. All. Very worthy goals. I do have a question, um, just for some clarification for myself. Historic preservation is a rollover goal that I added into this year from last year, although they do expect to complete their work this year. Um, I would, would think that a goal would be to support the recommendation and report that comes out of that ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. Um, I know it doesn't necessarily garner the big, you know, burning issue like town council goals for, you know, budgeting and, and some of these other issues. But if we whittled down to 10, I, I think to have historic preservation on there is probably not, not, not a hard thing to add. Mm -hmm. Well, as Bill um, mentioned, energy, historic preservation, cool. you've done your part by launching committees that are working, uh, mm -hmm. you know, very single-mindedly on these goals. It doesn't mean you have to do much. It just means you need to enable them and support yeah, them. Yeah, I think the momentum is there so that it's already going to go and the, and the council supports that. Another example is Karen Martin. that article in the paper. That's really right. generated an awful lot of thought amongst residents to what does that really mean for right. us. Right. Another example is Karen Martin coordinated the first one is, mm -hmm. is already underway coordinating the follow-up yep. one. So it's not right. something we need to right. do much of other than be a part of. Right. Um, that go will take on it's leadership role in a lot of these pieces. So, but it's important uh, for my staff and for others just to be mindful what's on your minds as a group. Right. Well, well I think that, that, that was kind of all committee summit too. I think an important thing is that I know that Karen's taking care of it, but making sure that we're getting our committees to support that stuff. Yep. Yep. So it's not just us it's that need to be there. It's getting the momentum going, getting our groups excited about these types of things. Right. And, and that was my point about oh, the, the preservation. It's not just council goals. Tom takes these goals, and that's not only just what we as a group and our committees that we, we attend on, but the staff uses those as, as to what's important. Um, you know, to, to the point of, of Dan here in planning has been monumental because we had housing as a goal we had historic preservation as a goal and being really active and helping to try to help seek out people that might be interested in properties or, or partnering, you know, kind of being that go-to person. 
excuse me. Right. Um, it, it's not so much the work just of the committee, it's the overall, you know, right. uh, is staff looking at this and working on it or is it, yeah, you know, some other day? Um, but I, again, I think what we've done here though, you know, and I think what we have done here is we have listed in order of priority so that when push comes to shove, you know, where we really want to be spending and this is how I'm interpreting the voting that's going on here, is are those areas that, like, the responsible and realistic budget. I mean, that's the really the most, to me, that's the most important thing is seeking tax stability. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what goes on in Augusta, that we need to be responsible on our end and do what we can do with the school board to maintain tax, I can't talk tonight, tax <laughs> stability Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying zero growth, I'm not saying, I'm not setting any numbers for mill rate or anything, but to assure our constituents that, you know, we aren't just going hog wild and, you know, we've got all these little projects mm -hmm. and we're just looking to spend money, that we are considering very strongly we're there at given what's going on in the, in the bigger picture of their lives. And likewise with the economic development, to me the economic development goes hand in hand with that realistic budget because more economic development and, and, and tax diversity we can bring into town, the more helpful it's going to be to the residential base. That's one of the strongest things about Scarborough, to be honest with you, is we do have a good mix of tax uh, base and we need to just keep that up and strengthen it. Which means, which means pushing some development like Scarborough Downs and Haggis and whatever. Yeah, sure. Just uh, the way these goals and, and having a council sit and, and do this once a year help inform staff. On your agenda tonight is a contract zone. Uh, one of the goals of the council last year was a uh, whatever it takes attitude as, mm -hmm. as regards economic development and business growth. Um, we could have easily said, no, we're going to push this off. Uh, you'll hear tonight that they're very anxious to get going. and so. Being mindful that we wanted the council that was, was receptive like to new ideas and investment, right. uh, we decided to schedule it. Uh, you may choose to table it tonight once you hear it, but um, that's just a way that uh, having the council articulate as a group its goals and, and the way it's thinking as a group help inform us on a daily basis. Oftentimes, you know, I was I was thinking a lot in the last week about kind of economic development because it's hard for us as well, amateurs in a sense, to, to know exactly how to promote it. But something that, I don't know, I can't remember what it was, Tom and I were talking about, this, this bubble of, of age, people 68 to 48, is, is this huge bubble going through the system. So affordable senior housing becomes an enormously important thing in the, for the next 20 years. And and I saw the affordable workforce housing, mm -hmm. and I was thinking that it's really not hard to add the word senior to that, co to into it's the flash. I it's figured affordable it, flash. It's in there. Work <laughs> work <laughs> There's a flash so, there. <laughs> well, I don't say I've got, yeah. pretend that I've got any expertise or skill or, <clears throat> or knowledge about how we <clears throat> could do it, but it would be something I would put some energy into trying to identify with others, Dan Bacon and Tom and, right. and Jessica knows about this, so I, mm. I think that's, because it's it is economic development. Because when you have senior housing, it broadens your tax base, yes. but it doesn't add anything to your school system. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. Now, it's the other thing to just keep in mind is that the big important stuff is multi year. It's my my oh, ten year yeah. horizon. Uh, this yeah. is a one year look. Many of you who have a three year window might be your horizon that you're looking at. Many of these things will surpass that and then some. This whole age issue um, is huge for us. It's going to it's going to inform how we, uh, what sort of community services program right. that we do, mm -hmm. how we build roads yeah. and transportation systems and public transit. And sure, Sean that. mentioned that aging in place initiative yeah. right. is it's another element. That's a job it's creation. Huge. It's a potential job creation, yeah. too. Right. Yeah, go ahead. You're first. Uh, sure. getting ready to, yeah. uh, an observation and then a comment. The observation is uh, keep in mind when you look at the outliers here, uh, the two biggest outliers also have two very strong opinions because one person um, um, checked off very strong opinions regarding 
number one and number four. <coughs> so it shouldn't be viewed as um, there is a definitive um, uh, definitive statement that we want uh, number one and four. Because I, if I, uh, and by the way, I'm really bad with my eyesight. If I see the colors right, it looks like one person actually had very strong opinions regarding number one and number four. Me? Well, yeah, that's fine. Uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing, I'm just I saying is that. This is six. I waited it. Four. No, I understand. So I'm just saying is that um, if you take away a person's um, ability to add multiple opinions to it, it's a very balanced, uh, it's a very balanced Fair approach point. to what we would need to look at. Um, the second piece is that, um, and I want to say this in the best way, um, I have my own opinion and I want to have my own things that I want to be looked at, but I am more than willing to be compromisable and to look at anybody else's. What happens next is taking this document and putting actionable items to it so that we can then measure and say whether or not we're successful, because mm -hmm. I don't think that we've ever done that. And there's a lot of things on here that might not be measurable. Um, and so I, I just question whether or not they can be consolidated. And I would want to look at that. And I would trust uh, maybe some advice from the town manager. I'm just saying that this is extremely lofty. And I, I think that actually it can be um, consolidated from the 10 that's being presented, maybe even a fewer. Um, and then look at what are our true measures of success as it relates to whether or not we can control them, because there's some things that aren't controllable. I mean, when it comes to the state, there's nothing controllable on our behalf, period. It might impact our budgets, it might impact things that we do, but there's nothing controllable about that, no matter who we elect as our legislative delegation, no matter what we do. Um, so I just want to kind of uh, bring that into line, because it's about what do we do with this information and then go to the next step. And it's, you know, what are the actions? Because I hope that in the end, um, we take uh, this list, we take the next action, and we say, uh, Mr. Manager, you achieved this one, you did not achieve that one, you achieved this one, and then at the end say, you achieved everything that we wanted to, at least to the most that you could, and you were successful. Um, so, well, I just want to be clear, these, these are council goals, so you know, I'll do my part to help right. achieve them. Well, that's our employee, I mean, so, well, in a nutshell, too, um, we do have, uh, which I would like to, if, if everyone's comfortable with, spend a little bit of the remainder of the meeting. Um, these items will come, Tom and I will sit and, 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 and hash out a little bit. Um, this does come back in front of council as an actual item for us to adopt. The second half of this meeting for this evening is our last year prior year's goals. And um, to maybe one of my points before is we had 17 goals and we had progress with all of them. So and I'm not too worried about if we narrowed it to five, if we narrowed it to six. I mean, right. we can make progress on, you know, certainly we want focus on the big one, which we can all agree is right. budget, and that'll eat up four months of our lives that we can't ever get back and probably stress us all out. But <laughs> but if we could, um, Tom has prepared for you um, the 2014 Town Council goals for last year and what those were and where we were at in progress with. So if you could yeah, go. I beg your pardon, I don't have a graphic to put up for everyone to see, but yeah. we'll make this available on the website. To Sean's earlier point, um, many of the goals don't have a quantifiable measure to be able to uh, 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 assign to it. And I would love to uh, hear further thoughts in that regard so we we can do that. And so I find myself trying to think back to what the council has done in the last year and see what kind of fits underneath these headings. The budget goal is a good one. It's, you know, it's a very short response. I just kind of report how it ended up. Um, it's kind of a, a weak response. Uh, but honestly, I didn't know how to respond to it any other way. Um, and I'm not sure if it deserves more than that. Um, so essentially, the, you know, the council and the final result, um, the budget provided for a 2.23 percent increase in the tax rate, uh, and that was based on uh, just over one and a half percent increase in expenditures for the town and about 4.4 percent increases uh, from the school. And this shouldn't be my show alone. Many of you participated. By all means, chime in if I've missed something or you want to go further. Uh, I think that I think you you. It was responsible budgeting, and you, you recited what the outcome was. 
So I, I think that's <laughs> quite adequate. Senior services, I and I should say, I, uh, I did solicit input from some of my staff that work more closely on these things. So Hallie Hodge uh, helped provide some guidance in this regard. Uh, under senior <coughs> services, uh, we're looking to expand partnerships and enhance and expand programming. Um, Edda, you could probably add to this as well, but I know they fairly significantly increased membership in the Senior WOW program, which is, is a tangible result. Uh, beyond that, their programming did expand um, in a number of different areas. Uh, their trips, certainly, um, iPad training class, swim fi uh, fitness classes, senior art programs, and a walking program. Um, you know, the notion of a survey might be a, a way for us to identify other areas in the future that would be of interest. Mm -hmm. Workforce housing, uh, this is really kind of a banner year. A lot of it just kind of came to fruition uh, this past year, or will soon uh, come to fruition. Mm -hmm. But the Habitat Project is inching ever closer. Um, there were a number of important improvements uh, in the ordinance in terms of uh, in lieu fees and related to density bonuses. And perhaps most importantly, just late last year, you, you reduced the, or changed the definition of affordable to a more realistic 80% uh, level from 120. Very meaningful stuff that I think will reap dividends. And the last thing was actually imposed a requirement for 10% affordable housing in the Crossroads District. Uh, first time and only district that has that requirement. So pretty significant progress, I'd say. Uh, there was a lot under the whole business-friendly uh, focus. Um, Karen Martin and Dan Bacon collaborated on these responses, so they're a bit more um, detailed, if you will. A lot of it has to do with reciting SEDCO's efforts under each of those kind of sub goals. So the first one was um, town department said co, the chamber and by local. A uh, fair amount of progress was made. They combine office space. They collaborate on any number of initiatives, uh, not the least of which is a kind of a visitor, uh, more tourist focused uh, approach, which is something that really seriously hasn't been a focus in the past. Uh, yet the tourist economy is, I think, pretty darn important to our beach communities. Uh, the whatever it takes attitude, I thought that was a great little phrase and in, in, in three words uh, really kind of summed up the attitude and that helps. Um, you know, Dan provided a number of examples uh, where we rolled up our sleeves and really worked with uh, different businesses um, on their plans. And it's really amazing when you enter these conversations, I, I honestly believe that no idea is a bad idea. Oftentimes the best ones, you know, it's, uh, it's it's the square peg in the round hole. It doesn't fit for zoning or for lot size. And uh, it's so helpful when you know the council is at least receptive to hearing a good idea. Um, and many, most times, I think you're able to kind of work through it. Streamlined permitting and approval process. Uh, again, I think we've made tremendous strides. Uh, you assisted staff by changing the ordinances. And we're pursuing uh, municipal capacity. That will allow us to streamline the development process. Uh, currently, many times applicants need to go to the state for various permits. That's as much as a 90-day process, expensive and time-consuming. We demonstrated local capacity through our staff and our consultants to be able to do that locally. It's quicker, cheaper, uh, and more efficient. So there's a final piece, a legislative piece, that we're working on this year to make all that happen. Reviewing standards and requirements. Uh, Certainly cell tower and wireless facility standards was uh, a bit of a preoccupation for several months last mm -hmm. year. I think the end result was a, a very <laughs> comprehensive um, set of ordinances. In fact, I've got a lot of colleagues calling me, uh, drawing from our experiences, and, and I think using much of our ordinance. So I won't say it's a model, but um, it's, uh, uh, I know it was not a, always a pleasant process, but a, an important one nonetheless, and I think the final result was fairly balanced and protective. Home-based businesses, uh, SEDCO has been working on one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one counseling and business plan development. Uh, these are folks that don't always have, many times don't have any business, business acumen and really need um, just a little bit of help to get them focused in the right way. And Karen's always willing to do that. So that kind of rounds out the business-friendly focus. Uh, improved communications. 
Uh, admittedly, I think we stumbled a bit. We didn't do a lot here, but we did launch a new town website, which I think affords some new opportunities. There's, uh, it's on a Google platform. There's the potential for surveying that we've not even tapped into yet. Uh, and I think it also presents uh, important content of the town in a better, more readable format. So I, I have to believe that has helped improve communications. Our e-newsletters is something that's ongoing. It's quarterly or as needed. We can always do that more. The issue there is content. We need right. help. Um, you know, I don't know about all of you, but <laughs> I get flooded with emails, and many of them are newsletters, and if they're just stale information, you tend to just delete them. So I'm sensitive to <coughs> want people, when they see something to come from the town, that they open it because it's something important. Exactly. So content's important. Uh, moving on, revised flood maps. That was really a, a function of FEMA tapping the brakes or slamming on the brakes and putting on the parking <laughs> brake. Nothing really advanced. I do on. think we'll see some activity in that regard this year. Allegedly. Uh, pardon? Allegedly. Now, they're, they're rumored to be reissuing the maps, and, and so mm -hmm. I think it will be a busier year in this mm -hmm. regard. I did notice that uh, FEMA has installed uh, uh, an advocate, uh, this is on the flood insurance yep. side of the equation, which might be a resource to our residents if they still have questions. Um, encouraging the school department to adopt an employee incentive program. We really didn't have much to report there. Uh, I've provided the information to the school department. I really can't force them to do <coughs> it. Um, I don't think they're opposed, uh, but I'll let them speak for themselves. Uh, historic preservation. Jessica could probably fill the next 20 minutes uh, okay. talking about that, but uh, I think tremendous progress is made uh, through the ad hoc committee and most recently with the council um, getting their report, and I think shortly <coughs> after that, um, so great progress made. Sharing services and privatization are, you know, kind of a focus on gaining efficiencies. Um, really, in, in response to a request of the finance committee last year, we've perhaps for the first time documented all the different services we share with the school board, school department, which was important uh, to finally put it on paper. The next step, and we're we're a good part through it is kind of um, assigning a value to that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the good news is the taxpayers benefit from uh, cooperation between the town and the school. Uh, it's coming out of the same taxpayer pocket. Um, so I think it was important to kind of document that, and there's always further areas for improvement. Uh, enforcement, this is on the zoning and building codes. Uh, we have through a number of uh, employment opportunities with attrition the staff. We've kind of rebuilt the whole uh, code enforcement office, uh, all the bases essentially, and really assembled a team uh, that I think has the, uh, you know, the next gear to go to. And, and I think we're, we're ready to, uh, to really provide excellent service. The townwide reval, this council uh, you know, uh, encouraged you to put it on the ballot. The voters turned it down. Um, looks like we'll be talking about it again this year. Yeah. Ongoing dialogue with the delegation. There was early last year a meeting with the legislative delegation, and I know a number of individual councilors stayed very close contact with, with members of the delegation throughout the year, uh, though we didn't convene another group meeting, and maybe that's something we can consider going forward. Well, plus we have the presence now on the uh, MMA. Legislative uh, PAC that we haven't had right. in the past. So. Yeah, Jim Ray serves on the Legislative Policy Committee, which uh, has a, a bit of an inside track on legislative issues. Uh, and we also have a fifth uh, legislator representing parts of Scarborough right. this year. So, right. but uh, uh, you know, I think Andrew McLean. We should certainly use that delegation to our. Andrew McLean, the chair of transportation, which will be helpful with yeah. Philip Scarborough. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, committee reports, and, and by that, uh, it was really a focus on uh, publishing agendas and minutes of, of committee activities, and um, we can improve more here. Uh, part of the problem is that most of this is being done. It just doesn't get to the right person to get posted timely. Uh, so if there's things that are missing out there, uh, the website is also structured where each committee has a web page. So I think it's easier for people to find what they're looking for. I think we can do a better job of getting good, relevant content up. 
And last, long-range facility planning. This is something I suggested and the council permitted on, yet I, don't, I really didn't make much progress last year. I do have things lined up this year, and actually the long-range planning committee has agreed to take an active role, a leadership position in that process. Uh, I think it's vitally important. You've probably seen in the paper that the school department has come out um, and pre been presented a very, very detailed facilities plan uh, focused, not entirely, but mostly on the K-2 schools and the middle school. <coughs> and I think it's, uh, I've not reviewed it um, entirely, but I think it's a, it's a good worthwhile effort. It's the starting point of a capital improvement program that they've never actually had. Uh, and I'll do my part to encourage them to do that. Why I bring that up is that we need to get the rest of the projects in the uh -huh. conversation right. Right. and dovetail these together to come up Amen. with a master plan. Right. And uh, the, the library's also interested in doing some fairly significant renovation in the future. Everyone needs to have an appreciation where they fit in the, in the order. And of course we need to be mindful of uh, fiscal or voter fatigue. Right. Uh, and be thoughtful and strategic about when we bring these things out. It's probably a 10 or 15 year horizon when you look at the scope uh, of everything. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, Tom, a question on the long range facility planning piece. Mm -hmm. In the past, has it just been typical that the manager participates in whatever the school department, uh, and I don't say that with uh, light of hand, if the school department is uh, uh, planning a facility planning, the manager is part of that conversation, but is it broader than that? Does it need to be broader than that um, because of the fact that we're now looking at um, pretty major uh, initiatives across the board that have to be balanced, or is it purely they just want um, those focused on schools? Yeah, I, you know, I've been here, this is my seventh year, so I, I can't really speak to the history. I suspect it's been uh, special interest and or crisis driven. Okay. Um, I, I'm not aware, but for some work done in the late 80s, master planning this site okay. and understanding kind of where the building <laughs> are and yeah. the opportunities. Oh, yeah. How something actually materializes and gets out to the voters, I, I think it's been, been more driven by crisis or special oh, yeah. interest. I mean, um, just in the short time that I've um, returned in the sense that, so I hear about, um, in, your, in your update, it's K2, but I've also heard in the public it's about the middle school. And then I've heard, uh, you know, so there's different levels of interest and right. uh, publicity, I guess, uh, around that. So I'm kind of curious what is the real crisis, if that's what you want to call it, um, that we're looking at for the school department in comparison to public safety, yeah, uh, public public other public and, services. And or opportunity. So, yeah, opportunities, yeah. Uh, I'm just kind of thinking back uh, in more modern history. Uh, public Works had some facility needs and there yeah. was a piece of real estate, a, a warehouse uh, that was yeah. for sale in the industrial park mm -hmm. and I think that opportunity present kind of vaulted that to the front, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, and believe me, I, I think probably everyone around this table has an opinion of the sorts of things that are kind of on that list and what mm -hmm. the order might be. I think it's important for everyone involved, including folks that are like the library who is mm -hmm. separate but falls under mm -hmm. us. Yeah has an opportunity to understand, uh, be part of the conversation, and understand where they fit in that overall scheme. And things will change as, as opportunities present themselves. In the, in the past couple of years, Tom, have the town council been encouraged to get involved in the um, school planning facility process, just at, at, even from an informational perspective? Well, what um, or is it strictly through the town manager? Um, Typically, it's through the staff. Uh, the okay. Wentworth Project did uh, attempt, and I think members of council were involved in that. Councilor yep. Sullivan, as I recall, was the liaison. No, that was amazing, yeah. Um, I think we probably... Has anybody approached us around the K-2, or I think I, I, I saw something about the middle school, maybe? The middle maybe? school is overcrowded right now. Uh, it has been since they've been. Does it AO? <laughs> I was part of the K-2 study, or the most recent facility study. I admittedly was not there at every meeting. That's fine. Um, has the council, though, been I asked? To to I'm not aware we that haven't the council been most recently. Formally, I'm asking about form Okay. The good news for the council is that you control the ballot question. No, you I control when it goes and and if it goes. If we can, can help. Can you clarify for everyone the capital budget process for schools for items under $400,000? 
uh, they, they're part of us, aren't they? They are certainly part of us. I can say it's been a source of frustration for me and I think for members of council to a certain extent as well. Uh, I, we pride ourselves on a, a, a thorough a five year capital improvement plan. Uh, the school always kind of is late to the game. Oftentimes their CIP requests for next year come in after the budget's presented. It's kind of folded in. And I think now they have a very good clean starting point from which to, to put the plan together. Once you do it the first time, it's much easier to keep right. it. So <coughs> they need to do a better job in that I, regard. Because I'm trying to understand when, when we look at the town's budget, we're looking at the town's operating budget and the town's capital budget. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only issue for us is if it's over 400000 it goes to referendum. Right. But otherwise, the town council, looking at the work that the finance committee does, now, just so people will understand, how does the school's uh, uh, capital budget work? They need to submit it and have it scrutinized by, because we're, we're passing on it. Yes, it's part of the, pro uh, the approval. Typically, it's a one-year focus. It doesn't have uh, any further focus than that. So it's really not a capital plan. It's a it's something other than operating. It's, uh, it's a way for them to advance projects. But, but you don't treat it like an operating expense. No, we call it a capital plan. But it, it And you, you'll designate it for different treatment in terms of <coughs> the way in which it's financed. Financed, and it's approved separately. It's part of the overall budget, but you approve an operating component and a capital component, and that has a town and school piece to it. Because I think we're not, we have to get our arms around our involvement in that. That's really why I'm bringing it up. Uh, so to my original question around the uh, facility planning on the school side, the question I have is, is there consensus amongst the town council as a liaison to the school board to request that maybe there is an invitation for us to be part of that facility planning so that the town manager is not the only person as part of that um, because I think that we need to be just as much as they need to be a part of our planning regarding the library and the other facilities, um, we should be part of their planning in advance and not just, um, um, so if there's consensus, I will, I, I will use my um, my liaison to well, I just have a question. requested, so I need to make sure that we everyone We have um, long-range planning doing the long-range planning for facilities, correct? Right. right. So, they would not be working with the school department? Well, they will. The school department has gone through its own process and has yeah. to have a final document. They already have We're their final document. We're going to keep that out here. The town needs to ramp up and do right. its own. Right. The two need to be kind of merged. And that's my question. Long range plan is not going to merge it those will. as a front front It will. Uh, but we need to round out that so everything's considered at the same time. And ultimately, this council will be the one to approve yeah. that. And all right, I was we're the ones who have to make a call on yeah, what are all, the priorities. Yeah, and all I was suggesting is that, if I heard it correctly, is that we, we just have not been invited to the table because in the past the manager has done that for us, so, um, and, uh, you know, obviously very well. Um, but I will be happy to recommend right. on behalf of the council that right. maybe one of us, if not two of us or whatever, um, actually sit on that committee and, um, you know, we, ex we extend that process so that... I, I, I'm quite sure in modern history, I'll say in the last 15, maybe 20 years, there has not been on the school side, and, and our, we should accept some blame on the town side, that kind of long range look. Oh, it's crisis driven. And We've I never know how the high school uh, improvement happened, but I know how the Wentworth happened. Uh, <laughs> that was totally crisis driven. Um, not the best way to plan. No. So uh, just real quick, so I'm going to cut everybody off, if there's one last maybe burning question that absolutely needs to be asked and answered, mm -hmm. um, just because given the time, we do need to, to wrap well, up. Reach, so. Everyone reach back and pat yourself on the back. I think we got a lot done last year. I mean, I yeah, think we it, did. It's impressive. It's daunting when you, at this time of the year, you put this on paper and you're like, oh boy, <laughs> we're going to have a busy year. And it's rewarding at the end of it to look back and say we actually accomplished much of it. So thank you for your help. And we will, um, I do believe they want 10 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah,